Hello students and welcome to Smart Kids uh, Tutorials. In this uh, video, we will be uh, making a mental note or a mental map of uh, uh, the polynomials chapter uh, to rather summarize uh, or have a recap of, uh, of the concepts that we have learned in polynomials. So the main purpose of this video is not to delve into the details of the various concepts for that there are various videos the link to those videos will be provided in the description box below and also you can view the playlist of polynomials that we have already covered uh, to learn in details about each and every concept so here we are only going to brush up or rather touch upon the various concepts or the whatever that makes up uh, this polynomials chapter for class 10. This will help uh, you to quickly uh, summarize or quickly uh, recall whatever was done in this chapter just before going uh, for your uh, exams. Okay, So that is why we call it as a mind map of polynomials and some even call it as a concept map because we make a short pictorial map of uh, what all uh, is covered in that particular chapter. So let's begin. So this is uh, the polynomials chapter and uh, to re recall what is polynomials, polynomials are usually in this form that is p of x equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x square and goes on. Then next one, next term will be a2, sorry a3x raised to 3. So over here it is a general form that we see in polynomials is an x raised to n. Okay. And this uh, n, the value of n will be the same as the value of n, that is the power of uh, this variable x. So you see over here, in the first case, it is a0, okay, and there's no x over here. That's because the power of uh, x is 0, because we see this n is in n both the places. So the power of uh, the variable x is the same as the power below, that is uh, in the subscript. So here n is 0, that means the power of x will also be 0 and anything raised to 0 becomes 1. So we don't have to write a0 into 1, we just assumed that it is 1. So a0, that's it. And the next uh, term that we see, it is a1 x and x raised to 1 actually it is. Okay, so we don't write 1, we just write x. Here it is a2 x raised to 2. So the n is 2 here and that is why the power of that variable is 2. So similarly, the next term would, as we have just said, would be a3 x raised to 3. And this is how polynomials continue. Now, very important to note over here that this a should not be equal to 0. Okay, then otherwise we will not have a polynomial at all. So a should not be equal to 0. Okay. Such polynomials are called that polynomials in x of degree n. Okay, polynomial of x degree. So the variable can change. It can be y, it can be z, it can be uh, some other letters as well. That when it is, let's say it is in y, then we'll say it is polynomial in y of degree n. Okay, n stands for a real number. Okay, real number and the important part is it should be non-negative. It should be non-negative, okay, non-negative number. It can be 0 but it can't be negative. Moving further from polynomials, so we know what is the general form of polynomials. Okay, now this polynomials depending on these powers are given certain names and we come here. Okay. If you look over here, here uh, three columns we can see. Uh, first column tells you what type of a polynomial it is. Second column will tell you what is the degree of that polynomial. And the third uh, column will give you a general form in which those uh, polynomials are uh, available to us or rather we encounter them in the, those forms. So first one where the degree is 1, the polynomial is known as linear and the general form is ax plus b. Now to recall what is the degree we come here okay, and then we will jump back again into this uh, particular degree of polynomial that we were discussing. This is a polynomial. Okay, 
polynomial consisting of just one term. Here we discussed over here the about terms. So this is one term, this is second term, this is third term. Over here there is only one term. Okay. Now over here you see there is term one and term two. A x becomes one term, b becomes another term. Here also A x square becomes one term, b x becomes second term, c becomes third term. So here we have just one term, two x raised to two. Remember it, this is not whole 2x as in this 2x is not in brackets and whole thing is not raised to 2. It is just this variable that is raised to 2. So 2 we when we say it, we say 2x square. Now what is 2x square? There are different parts. Let us like uh, separate them out and understand what is 2, what is x and what is this 2 above x. Okay. We know this whole thing is called as one term. Good. This 2 in front of this x square is referred to as the coefficient of whom of this x okay and this x is referred to as a variable the reason why it is called variable is because the value of that particular letter can keep changing and because it has a, a wide number of numbers can be accommodated in that uh, in place of that letter in case of this it is x we call that as a variable this is actually a constant which we call as a coefficient of x because this number will not change. Yeah, we can have different polynomials where you have 3x square, 4x square, but in this polynomial, this 2 will not change, but the value of this x can keep changing depending on the value that we put it over there. The 2 that you see on top of this x is the power of this variable, okay, is the power of that variable. So, 2x square where 2 is the coefficient, x is the variable and 2 is the power and this one, this whole thing represents a single term. Now, this 2 is a real number, okay. Any real numbers will make up the coefficient. Now, real numbers, if you recall, can be integers which means they can be negative, they can be whole numbers that means they can even include 0 or it could be natural number that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 all these come under real numbers. So, there is no restriction on this uh, coefficient that is uh, seen in case of polynomials. The power however uh, of this variable has to be a non-negative uh, integer. So, in other words uh, basically they have to be whole numbers. Whole numbers begin from 0. So, it can be 2x raised to 0. In that case the whole thing will become, uh, in that case the variable will x raised to 0 will become 1. Okay. So, this is how we represent a uh, polynomial. Uh, coming back over here where we are, we are discussing about the degree of the polynomial. So, the degree of the polynomial is what we are referring to the highest power of this polynomial. Okay. The highest power of x in that polynomial. The highest power of x. Now, here there is no x. If there is no x, does not mean there was no x over there. It just means that the power of x in this case is uh, equal to 0. So, b x raised to 0 and anything raised to 0 is 1. So, we write it just as b. Here the power of x is 1 that is why x is still here and that is why we say the degree of this polynomial is 1. It is the highest degree. Okay, There is no nothing greater than 1 in case. In the next row that we see, we see, call those type of polynomials as quadratic because the degree, highest degree of that polynomial is 2. If you look at this, the uh, degree of x here would be 0, degree of x here is 1 and the degree of x in this case is 2. That is the degree that we take. The highest degree of that particular polynomial becomes the degree of that polynomial. So, 2 is the degree because 2 is the highest power of all the coefficients that are present over here. In this case, if you look at this polynomial, the highest power in this particular polynomial is 3 and that is why we say the degree of this polynomial is 3 and we call such polynomials as cubic polynomials. Now, in all these cases where ax plus b or ax square plus bx plus c or ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d, it is very important to note that the value of a, the coefficient, has to be not equal to 0. So, it should not be equal to 0 because if it is, if it becomes equal to 0, let us take the first example. 
if it becomes equal to 0 then we will have only b okay and in that case uh, it doesn't become a linear uh, polynomial similarly over here if a becomes equal to 0 then it doesn't become a quadratic rather it will end up becoming a, li a linear polynomial similarly over here if a is becomes equal to 0 then it no longer become uh, remains as a cubic polynomial rather becomes as a quadratic polynomial got it so these are certain conditions and we know now what are degrees of polynomial moving from degrees of uh, polynomial we go to representation of this polynomials graphically and when we speak about representation of polynomials graphically we look at how the roots or rather the what we call in polynomials the zeros of the polynomials can be represented graphically so before we go into uh, finding the what how many zeros a uh, particular graph should be showing we need to understand what do you mean by zeros of a polynomial now zeros of a polynomial mean that if we let's say if we put a particular real number in uh, place of that variable which is present is in the polynomial then the whole polynomial when it becomes zero that makes that particular number as the zero of that polynomial for example we have over here 2x raised to 2 now if i put let's say in place of this x i change it i take the value of x equal to 0 and i put 0 over here in that case 0 raised to square will be 0 and 0 into 2 because this is multiplication 0 into 2 will also become 0 and in that and in the bargain this entire polynomial that is 2x square will become equal to 0 that means when I put p of x which was equal to 2x square if I put in place of that x if I put 0 then this entire polynomial so p of 0 will be become equal to 0 that means this entire polynomial becomes 0 that number which you substitute in place of this x makes that number as or what we call it as a 0 that's what we have summarized over here a real number alpha alpha is any real number is a zero of the polynomial p of x if p of alpha see see over here that the x is replaced by alpha and what is alpha any real number so if that real number we re, uh, we re, uh, we choose to replace this uh, x over here and once we replace that x with that alpha and similarly like wherever there is x in that polynomial the alpha will come that is a real number once we calculate that value if it comes to 0 that means that alpha is the 0 of that particular polynomial ok a polynomial can have many zeros now it depends on the type of polynomial ok for example linear polynomials you know they will have just one zero a quadratic polynomial will have two zeros and cubic polynomial will have three zeros ok something that you will learn as you uh, practice problems on polynomials and try to find out their zeros in quad when we learn quadratic equations we call them roots and in polynomials we call them zeros one of the same thing in there in polynomials we refer to them as zeros because whenever we put the value whatever the real number is in place of x the value of that entire polynomial becomes zero coming back to the graphs okay uh, zeros of polynomial graphically here if you will have a look there are three cases discussed okay that is the, you have the, your y axis you have your x axis and you have this curved line now this curved line represents a series of uh, numbers okay or uh, coordinates that uh, create what we call this is usually what we call as a parabola okay this is upside down u and uh, the proper u that we see in all these three cases now in terms of polynomials they have a meaning this line that you see curved line or upside down u is cutting the x-axis at two points one and two and wherever it cuts the x-axis it indicates that those many zeros are present for that particular polynomial this curved line represents a particular polynomial 
and that particular polynomial where uh, has got two zeros uh, without solving for those polynomial without trying to find out graphically we can find out how many zeros are there for that polynomial okay that is by looking or rather uh, noticing how many places does this line meet or cut the x axis here there are two places and hence we can say the number of zeros are 2 again here it's in two places and we can say the number of zeros are 2 now in this case here you may notice that it is not cutting the x axis but rather touching it both the cases now whether it cuts or touches okay every time the line touches the x axis means there is a zero in this case it is touching only one point because if it cuts that means we'll have more than one zero here these are examples of having only one zero and that is why it is showing you upside down u and proper u but in both cases it is just touching the x axis at one particular point and that is why we say the number of zeros are one in the third case here that we see we have u and upside down u as well in uh, but neither of them touch the x axis they are cutting through y axis but they are not touching x axis and when they don't cut the x axis we say that the number of zeros are zero okay so zero one two another point to remember here is that as i said this line represents an equation okay or rather a polynomial so in case of uh, when the number of uh, zeros are 2 is in case of quadratic equation so we have the polynomial as ax square plus bx plus c now this whenever this a okay is greater than 0 the value of a is greater than 0 then that graph will look something like this that means it will have a u-shaped parabola but if the value of a in this case is less than 0 then the parabola will look something like this upside down u similar thing applies over here when this tells you the u parabola tells you that the value of a that is the coefficient in this case is greater than 1 sorry greater than 0 and in this case uh, the a value is less than 0 same thing applies for this one and this one as well okay so just a small point to remember especially it will come in handy when uh, we answer uh, MCQs moving further this is finding the zeros graphically but we also can find out zeros by establishing a relationship or rather looking at the relationship between zeros and coefficients of quadratic equation okay now or rather quadratic polynomials so let's say we take alpha and beta to be the zeros of the quadratic polynomial okay we know that quadratic polynomial will give us two zeros so let's say those two zeros are alpha and beta okay then in that case the sum of the zeros give us this relationship so that is alpha plus beta is equal to minus b upon a and that is the sum of the zeros and the product that means the multiplication of those two zeros that is alpha into beta will give us equal to c upon a where does this b a and c a come from they come from this quadratic polynomial ax square plus bx plus c so this a is what you can see in the denominator in both the cases b in this case comes from here and c comes from here so alpha plus beta equal to minus b upon a in case of finding if we, we need to find the sum of the zeros and alpha into beta gives us uh, equal to c upon a if we need to find the product of the zeros in other words what does b means b means actually the coefficient of x a is the coefficient of x square similarly over here also c is the constant term and a is once again the coefficient of x squares okay so all these quadratic polynomials having zeros alpha and beta can be given by a general form 
that uh, you will be able to see in those videos that are mentioned below the link to them it is present in the form k into x square minus alpha plus beta into x plus alpha beta okay as in uh, where k is the real uh, a real number and we establish a relationship between the sum and the product in case of the quadratic polynomial so with the help of this uh, um, alpha and beta so if we know the zeros of the polynomial we can also find out in a reverse fashion what was the polynomial that gave these zeros so we learn we learn to find out the product and the sum of the zeros but also from if they are given we can deduce or rather find out what was the polynomial that gave us those zeros alpha and beta so that is establishing relationship between zeros and coefficients of quadratic equation coming to the last part and the last part uh, deals with the uh, division algorithm basically division division in case of polynomials and it says if p of x and g of x are two polynomials with g of x not equal to 0 then p of x equal to g of x into q of x plus r of x so before i go further i will say what is p of x g of x q of x rx if we recall then p of x is our dividend that uh, gets divided g of x is our divisor which divides the dividend q of x is the quotient and r of x is the remainder q stands for quotient r stands for remainder okay so this is a form that we write it in p of x equal to g of x into q of x plus r of x. in other words dividend equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder so if we multiply divisor into quotient and add it to the remainder if there is any remainder then it should give us the dividend normal division that we use even for our long division method this is in case of the polynomials where there are variables in form and here it shows you that the variable is in x if it is y the variable is y then it would be p of y equal to g of y into q of y plus r of y this will keep changing based on the letter that is mentioned but overall the general form is this of the division algorithm okay now just like your normal division that you do with numbers here also the division stops if the remainder becomes equal to 0 or if the degree of the remainder becomes less than the degree of the divisor see in this case in case of polynomials division of polynomials we don't uh, use uh, decimal points like your normal numbers that we would do okay so the the moment the degree of the remainder becomes less than the degree of uh, your divisor then the uh, division has to stop so whatever remainder then you uh, get at that particular point uh, is what we would call as your r of x uh, certain cases r of x becomes equal to 0 then of course we can't proceed further there's nothing left to divide anymore okay so this is about uh, in a nutshell what uh, polynomials is for the class 10 examination and uh, uh, this whole video is made with the intention that you just have a look at this entire thing and get a grasp of what all is there in this particular chapter there's a lot more practice to be done to understand and to solve problems based on this but if you have done all the revision and you just quickly want to uh, recap or revise or just recollect just before going to uh, for your exams then this would serve you appropriately so this is known as a mind map okay and this what we have discussed now is the mind map of polynomials discussing the various concepts that are there within that chapter of polynomials for class 10 examination so i hope you find it useful you can please if you find it useful please like the video share it with your friends and classmates subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so and keep watching for more such interesting videos thank you for watching